Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Barrett channel. Have I got a cracker for you today? I am still in Yangshuo, which is uh, about two and a half hours, three hours on the train north of Shenzhen. And you know why I'm here. I'm studying Chinese and I'm going to get into that a little bit later. Now, I bought a bike yesterday. I bought a scooter to get around Yangshuo and um, I posted in a couple of WeChat groups. A guy reached out to me and said his son has one. And I could see that this guy was uh, from New Zealand. So his son is half from New Zealand, half Chinese. And um, I bought the bike off him. I'm about to show you that in a second. And this kid is super interesting. He, I say kid because he's literally only 16 years old, but he's really mature for his age. And I was talking to him about his perspective because he moved to China when he was three years old. So, and, and even though he's half Chinese, he doesn't really look that Chinese. So he's got a very unique perspective because he grew up in a village in China looking like a foreigner. And he's the first person I've actually met who has had that life. So he was nice enough to ask me to come to his village and show me around. So he's just over there. I'm going to introduce you to him in a second. And I'm super excited. I'm going to go check out his village and see what's about. And yeah, I'll share this kid's perspective with you. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a good one. So this is my new bike. I'm pretty happy with it. And little did I know, it was going to be this guy who's selling it to me. G'day, mate. I'm Richard. <laughs> Inter Inter Richard, right? Yeah. Yeah, cheers, right. Thanks for inviting me to your village and uh, let's make our way there, shall we? Yeah, All right, let's go. Let's go. All right, so we've arrived. Um, it's about half an hour on the bike. Hope you enjoyed that drone footage. I tell you, that was absolutely intense when I was flying whilst we were riding. That was pretty cool. Um, we're gonna go and have a look around the village soon. This is the uh, house that he does live in. It's rather huge, which is quite typical in these um, villages because there's a lot of area to build, you know. Um, so we're gonna have a little look around the village very shortly. And yeah, I'll take you there. Take the camera, whatever we get up to. You'll be there with us. So, we're in your house. Yep. And how long have you lived here? Oh, well, about uh, 10 years, I think. Do you live here with just your mom or other people as well? Uh, with my granny and my grandpa, but he's not live here, he's live uh, up there. Oh, okay. And did you say you had a brother and sister? Uh, yeah, oh, you have a brother. I have a, you have a brother. little brother. He's six years old. Oh. His name is Thomas. Oh, that's my brother's name too. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I just want to ask you a little bit about like what it's like to be you, to be honest. Because so Rich is half from New Zealand, right? Yeah. And half Chinese, and you don't look that Chinese. You know, you look a little bit Chinese, but yeah. most people who are half Chinese look very Chinese. <laughs> So you don't have the very strong genes. Yeah. So you grew up in a very rural area looking like a foreigner. Yeah. So how was that? You know, what, what was that like? Well, at first, uh, they are rude. You know, they just uh, say some bad words. But uh, later, they start to realize that's really not good. So they stop. And now they, you know, just treat me good. Yeah, because you've lived here for quite a while, right? Yes, so does yes. everyone in the village know you? Yeah, of course, and even near uh, that village, they know me. So you said at first they were a little bit, a little bit rude. Is that in school and stuff like that? Well, both um, in school and at home. When they come and play, they'll say, uh, "Hey, foreigner." Right, right. They because you're the only person who's different, right? Yes. So, um, especially kids, they, they will say things without, yes, without yes. thinking, you know. So did you find it a little bit difficult when you were growing up? Well, difficult, you know, there definitely will be some difficult in uh, the time you're growing up. Yeah. But, you know, you have to go through it. Mm, yeah. Well, that's the way of life, man. Yeah, exactly. exactly. See, it's... It, this kid's only 16 and he's, he's very mature for his age. Very mature for his age. 
I wish I could have been as, I'm going to use the word, intuitive as you when I was your age. You're very self-reflective. You think about things a lot. I think that's good. Okay, thanks. Um, um, I live in Shenzhen, Uh so all these big cities get loads and loads of, of foreigners there. So you don't really feel like any different. You know, yeah. people don't really look at you as if you're any different to anyone else. But here, there's been very, very few foreigners here over the time, right? Of yes, the last yes. 10 years. Um, there's more now because Yangshuo is a holiday destination. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you live a little bit further out, so not too many here. Yeah. So maybe that was why you were experiencing those things. Yeah, so you're literally the only foreigner living here right now, which is quite cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite cool to be able to say that. Um, yeah, no, I just think you're, like I said before, your perspective is very unique because there's not too many people who have had the same, yeah, the same situation as you. All right, cheers, man, and we'll head outside in a minute. All right, let's go. All right. Hello, guys. I just wanted to jump in here and tell you the reason why I am in Yangshuo. If you didn't know already, I'm studying at the Language College Omeda, and uh, I'm actually having a little break right now uh, because I've been on a couple of trips and whatnot. Uh, but I've spent about a month there so far, and I've really, really enjoyed my time so far. It's really kind of relaxed. It's not like formal teaching, um, yet the, the 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 teachers and and the whole team are very. Uh, professional and it's it's kind of like a family community you know you go away on trips together the teachers are just like your friends outside of class and um, yeah I'm really looking forward to get back because even just in a month I felt my Chinese level improve quite a lot if you want to sign up with Omeda, you can do so. Whether you go to Yangshuo or you want to do the online classes that they do have, um, you can use the code Barrett200 to get yourself a 200 RMB discount. Not only does that get you a discount, but it lets them know that I'm the one who sent you. Uh, so we will earn a small commission from it. Okay, so let's get back to the video. Hope you enjoy. This is our mode of transportation around the village. We're at our first stop. This is kind of the... Um, would you call this the center of the village? Uh, no, it's like a playground or something. Okay, and what, did this area look like this five or ten years ago? No, it's uh, it's more beautiful now. Before, it's old and uh, like uh, almost dead. Right, kind of falling apart. Yeah, falling apart. And this place is also, you know, just quite I can, new I can say a lot of the buildings yeah. are really new I can tell yeah so why how have how have the people um, been able to create all new buildings is it are they spending their own money or no because uh, now government were helping those villages to fix their houses and build new houses and you can see on the wall those painting you see that yep okay uh, Maybe that one is from my grandpa. Really? Yep. No way. Yes. So, but sorry, I heard a little bit about your grandpa. Uh huh. And um, your dad was telling me a little bit about him that he's a pretty interesting character. Mm -hmm. He can do calligraphy, right? Yes. And obviously, he's a very talented painter. saw just now uh, painted by this guy's grandpa yep and they're really really good which is that's so cool it's kind of adds a nice vibe to the village it's hard to drive here but I'm okay bye grandpa this is his grandpa, the legend himself. Oh, oh, oh. Ni hao, ni hao. Oh, hao. Oh, ni hao. Oh, ni hao. Oh, ni hao. Oh, ni hao. Ah, do, do, do. Oh. Oh, do, do, do. Oh, do, do, do. So we're at his grandpa's house. He's a very nice guy. He's, he's, he's uh, welcomed us into his home and he's going to actually do some calligraphy, I think, or some painting for us. So that is super cool because he's obviously a bit famous in this village for doing that. Hello. Yeah. The cute little kid. <laughs> and we just spotted this outside. Now this is a classic 
typical image that we have of um, Chinese bikes. Yeah. You know, maybe 40 years ago, they were still using these type of bikes. Um, that's really, really interesting. So this is how, in a very traditional home, people wash their hands, right? Yes, of course. And there's a little gap down there to let the water through. Yep. I've, ne um, I've never actually seen this before. So. Wow. Super, I mean, we're just talking like, all of this stuff doesn't seem very interesting to Richard because this is, this is his life. This is how he's grown up. But for me, seeing this is super interesting because it's so different to how we lived when we grew up. So it's, it's very interesting to see how, how other people have lived, you know, across the world and still live, you know, not even in the past, like even yeah. just in the present. So we've just come into his grandpa's um, painting studio, I'm gonna call it. And as you can see, he's got loads of couplets um, hung up on these. They must be drying, right? I guess they're drying. Yeah. And what do you call these in Chinese again? Dui Lian. Dui Lian. Mm. And these are for, you know, New Year and uh, just hanging up beside your door. So, he's finished after roughly half an hour. That's pretty incredible, mm. I think. It's a bamboo tree with flowers and grass, and here he signed his name over here. But, but, Grandpa says that this is nowhere near his best work. He's not too happy with this painting, and he would like to do me another one so that he can do one that's extra good. But I'm looking at this and thinking that is a hundred million times better than what I could ever do. That's, I think that's really impressive to be able to do that in half an hour. And it just shows you how skilled some of these people are, you know? <laughs> and this is your grandpa. Yeah. What a legend. I can't believe what I've just oh, seen. Okay. Uh, and you want here in Plaitis? I can't believe what I've just seen. I'm still trying to take it in. He's just he's just painted it, finished it, and oh, sorry. and now this is the painting. Yeah. Now that is not any flute, that's a handmade flute. Taken one of these pieces of bamboo and turned it into this flute. This guy can do everything. He's a well-rounded, he's a, he's a DIY kind of guy, as you can see. Anyway, a huge thank you to his grandpa. What an absolute legend. We're gonna go to a river that's nearby and gonna get some more drone footage and stuff like that, so stick around. Just done here in what's the village called? Sulio. Sulio. 
So, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thank you to Richard for being so welcoming and uh, inviting me here. I do appreciate it. Anyway, I hope you did enjoy. Make sure you do drop a like on this video. If you did, comment down below what you think of this rural village. And if you want to see more of this kind of thing, let us know. And we will see you in the next one. You ready? Three, two, one. Take, Take care. care. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Lovely stuff.